name is Mims, everybody. And I made a game with React and Redux just to try it out and see how it works. Um, it's a basic retro puzzle game, and I'm going to show you what it looks like now. So perhaps you've seen something like this before. Um, yeah, that's my game. Every game has something called a game loop in it. And it's basically some functions that run that are just on a loop that are constantly looping as long as the game is running. Uh, probably the most important of those functions is the update function. And this is going to just update the state of the whole game. So you're doing things like evaluating the user input. You're calculating the positions of pieces, updating the score, and so forth. And then the update function is going to call draw. And draw is responsible for just rendering everything that's in the state to the screen. The last step is wait, but really what we're trying to say is that we're going to constantly loop. So in JavaScript, we're going to use request animation frame for this. And that's the basic idea that we're now going to try to cram into React. So uh, yeah, I showed you this before. We have update, then draw. But when we move to React, instead of calling draw directly from update, we're actually going to call react-dom.render and then let React handle the draw inside of uh, component did update. So it looks kind of like this. You have component did mount and component did, did update that's going to handle both that first draw and then every one after that. And I really thought this was going to be super difficult to implement, but it turns out it just works. It was really easy. So let's see how we might move the game state into React for this game. So this is where we were doing React DOM.render from the update method. When we add Redux, we're actually going to do it basically like you might expect. We're going to dispatch uh, actions from the update loop. And then that's going to pass on to Redux, which is going to update the components. And our state is going to look something like this. We have uh, the game board where, our, where the whole game is played. So this is going to be a two-dimensional matrix, which is an array where every item is an array containing numbers for each of the cells in the game. Um, and I'm also going to model the various pieces as 2D arrays uh, with numbers for each different color. And of course, the first thing I did is try making some really crazy shapes, but I soon realized that there is a reason that those are not in any original games. <laughs> um, so matrices really make it easy to detect collisions and combine multiple matrices together. And of course, in real life, the code doesn't move around on its own. Uh, it looks sort of like this. We have detect collision at the top, and we have combined matrices at the bottom. And I can't really go into all this right now, but you can take a look at this slide later if it's interesting to you. Um, and this is actually our whole state tree that we're looking at here. We have some numbers for the score and the level. We have the game state, whether it's paused or running. We also have an object representing the next piece and the current piece that you're controlling the game board, of course. And at the bottom, we have a config object that just lets us set some real-time settings while the game is running. So you're probably wondering, should I be using React for a game for my next game? And maybe it could be good for games with discrete states like this game or with maybe a board game. It could be good for games that are rendered entirely in the DOM or for creating the UI around the game. But for most games, it's probably not going to help you that much. However, I hope that if you have to learn something new, that you get to make something fun for you. And if you want to play with this game or look at the source code, you can do that here. Thank you. <laughs>